that one of the main issues that most marketers have is not really understanding all the technical aspects of SEO and how to really associate their content strategy to SEO. We all know it's important. We know it has something to do with Google algorithms, but we do leave it up to our SEO experts a lot if we ever decide to hire one. And you know, the time has come, I believe, for us as marketers and even salespeople to really get a basic foundation of how SEO is important to your business today, especially because of current circumstances where you are now more than ever forced to be online and your interactions with your customers are going to be online. So you do need to make sure that your prospects can find you while your sales teams are not able to go out and do field marketing and field sales as they used to um, pre-corona days. So SEO is one of those ways that will really help either surge your business and help it increase over the next couple of months, or we would see that many businesses will suddenly fall out the bandwagon, as they say, because nobody can find that they exist and nobody knows that they exist. So SEO is really the way to get things done. So I would like to begin, first of all, by introducing you to Tom Harrell. Um, he will tell us a bit about his agency. He's also a HubSpot partner. So Tom will tell you shortly about us, about himself rather. In the meantime, though, I want to set the foundation of what you can expect for us to cover in today's workshop. So as we mentioned, it's all about SEO, and we want to take you through some very strategic points about SEO. First, we're going to look at how keywords are used versus topics. Everybody's talking about focusing on topics. So this is a lot about semantics SEO. So we will explain a bit about this. Then we want to help you understand how do you determine that your SEO is successful or not. So we will show you how to measure and track SEO success. And then we would like to walk you through a new sort of terminology called content clusters. So we will explain what exactly are content clusters and how you build them. And then we will give you a short demo about how SEO is done in HubSpot, as well as take you through some recommended tools for using SEO. And of course, tie everything into talking about the key takeaways and the, any questions that you may have. So first of all, you all should know me by now. My name is Risa Gooding. I'm from Kakao Media. And Kakao is a Platinum HubSpot agency. We work globally in Tel Aviv, New York, and Nairobi in Kenya, and we specialize only in HubSpot. So our goal is really to help you understand if you're using HubSpot already, how to use HubSpot for your business and how to get the most out of it. This is a platform that you've invested in, and we want to make sure that you are using it to the full potential, because I must tell you in my experience of meeting HubSpot clients, they aren't even using 10% of the platform as they should. So my goal is to get you up to 90%, if not 100% of using the platform. Um, we work with a many different types of companies in many different industries. So whether you're a medical company, a startup company, a travel company, even agriculture, everyone knows today that they have to use HubSpot. Um, because we are in Israel, though, we decided to help bring you a lot of content in Hebrew. So although today's workshop is in English, we do have some workshops in Hebrew for those people who feel better, um, easier to communicate in Hebrew, of course. Don't worry, I'm not going to try to speak your lovely language. So I do not do the Hebrew workshops. I have other members of my team who actually do them. But you can join our LinkedIn group called HubSpot Customers Israel to find out when they're coming along. And you could also use this group to ask any questions in Hebrew about anything that you would like to understand better in HubSpot. So we offer a wide range of services. As you know, it's all related to HubSpot, but we do take off, we do do all of your marketing strategy and all the execution. So mainly a lot of companies use us as the extension of their marketing and even their sales teams. So whatever your issues are, whatever challenges you're facing with your, your company, and if you just need a second eye or second opinion, or even someone to bounce ideas off. We are sometimes the perfect partner for this, but you know, feel free to call us and we'll be happy to talk more about how we can help you. At this stage, I'd really like to hand over to Tama. So Tama, as I mentioned, is from Key Scouts, another HubSpot partner. 
but he will tell you all about himself. So thank you, Tomo, and welcome, and really appreciate that you're coming here today. So you can share your screen, Tomo, and you take it over from here. Okay, Risa, thank you so much. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we do hear you. Everything right, just, bright and nice. Just uh, testing. So first of all, it's, uh, it's a privilege to be here, and thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Tomer and I'm uh, the head of uh, Key Scouts. Um, uh, we are a full service uh, digital marketing agency based here in Israel, working primarily with, uh, uh, with B2B technology clients, mostly aiming, to, uh, um, aiming at the international market. Uh, company was established 15 years ago. We are uh, a small team of uh, sharks with a big impact on, uh, uh, at least we hope so, on, uh, on our customers' businesses. And uh, uh, during this time, we've worked with hundreds of customers from all types of sizes. Uh, many of them you, you probably know. Uh, and uh, I'm humbled to be here and uh, share a little bit of uh, our knowledge. Uh, I know Risa from uh, mutual work in the past and also the fact that we are both uh, uh, HubSpot certified uh, uh, bring, brings us uh, closer together. So um, uh, without further ado, I want to, uh, uh, we, we decided to, to dedicate this uh, webinar to uh, to what SEO really means uh, nowadays compared maybe to the traditional perception of the past because a lot, a lot has changed uh, during the past several years. Uh, and I wanna start with uh, explaining what semantic SEO means because this is the foundation of everything else we will discuss in this uh, presentation. So uh, I don't know how many of you uh, knew Google when they just got started, but it was all about keywords uh, at the beginning. So you would simply type what you're looking for and Google would bring you the best results based on uh, how many uh, instances of a keyword they would find on a page and how many links were pointed uh, to that page. And that's, you know, in a nutshell, uh, a pretty vague uh, description of how it worked uh, at the beginning. Uh, but uh, in the past uh, several years, uh, Google became, and they're still in the process of becoming a lot smarter than uh, uh, when they just got started. So, uh, uh, and, and they actually uh, uh, introduced uh, semantic search to the world. And I want to explain what semantic uh, search is and what it means for SEO. So uh, uh, the idea is really that uh, Google uh, uh, tries to understand uh, and the natural language the same way a human uh, would. Uh, so if you are typing a certain query in Google, uh, they try to really understand the intention behind uh, what you're typing, not just uh, breaking it down to to keywords and 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 uh, fetching the right pages, but really understand uh, the intention behind uh, uh, what you're looking for. So uh, uh, if, if uh, we're gonna read the description here, uh, it basically described the search engine's attempt to generate the most accurate results possible by understanding your search intent, the context of the query that you are uh, putting in, and the relationship between uh, words. It's not just about understanding the uh, one word. Or, uh, if if we're looking, uh, if if we're going back uh, on the timeline, uh, I think that the major milestone was the introduction of the knowledge graph to uh, uh, to Google's algorithm, which is basically a massive database of public information. This was first introduced in. Uh, uh, 2012, eight years ago, uh, and it's basically a huge database that uh, connects uh, uh, people to things, to events, to any object that we know of, and uh, Google are trying to are constant, 
constantly expanding this database uh, so they can uh, understand very interesting things that they would not understand otherwise. Uh, a year later, they introduced the Hummingbird uh, uh, algorithm update, uh, which is uh, a lot considered the beginning of semantic search, the semantic search era uh, as we know it today. And two years later, in 2015, uh, they basically introduced a machine learning system that uh, seeks to understand the user intent uh, behind the uh, search queries. Uh, and that really uh, uh, created a revolution in, in the search uh, world. Um, so if we break it down to what, what exactly does it mean, uh, you can, it allows Google today to distinguish between uh, different entities understand uh, which entity you are referring to and what, what are the connections between uh, the various entities uh, that may be constructing the query that you're using. Uh, under entities, you can find people, you can find places and things in general. And, uh, and they also look at uh, many more factors like your uh, search history, your location, your uh, uh, the global search history of a specific topic and spelling variations and many more. So just as an example, uh, if you are looking for, I'll give you a very simple example uh, that you, you probably know. If you're looking for a pizza, if you just go online to Google and type pizza, uh, based on your location, you will get different results. Uh, whereas if you were in New York, you would get uh, pizza shops in, in New York and, and, you will see something completely different on, on the Google page. Uh, same goes for your search history. If, if they know you're interested in a specific topic, they will present different results to you and, and it goes deeper and deeper, uh, uh, way further than that. So uh, uh, you might have heard the term universal search where uh, uh, the results are not, uh, they don't match it. They really depend on, on uh, who is logged into Google and, and uh, the, the whole history and search intent. Uh, but this is, uh, uh, this is all, uh, the, the whole idea really that Google are trying to uh, uh, develop and evolve. Uh, they, their mission is always to give you the best possible results uh, for uh, anything you may search online. They're doing a pretty damn good job, I think. So. Uh, uh, so th there's a whole science behind it of learning human behavior and, and search patterns uh, of humans and trying to implement what they've learned into their uh, uh, machine learning system. So I think that most people don't understand really or they're not aware of how much, um, uh, how much uh, coding and, and, and concept uh, lies behind just searching something on Google. but it goes really, really deep, and it's really impressive what they've achieved so far. So uh, I want to give you some uh, quick, uh, two quick examples to really show you what semantic SEO means. Uh, for example, if you go to Google today and you type, what is the largest mammal? Uh, Google will show you this result that you're seeing right here on, on the left side. They show you a blue whale. Uh, now note that nowhere in my search query, uh, you, you, you see the words nor blue, nor whale, nor combination of it. And yet this is what comes up uh, and it's a result of their knowledge graph and understanding the search intent behind my query. Uh, and that's pretty impressive when you think about it compared to the first years of Google where uh, they would only show you uh, pages where the words largest mammal or what is largest mammal uh, would construct the text. Nowadays, they may show you in the results something that has nothing to do with, with the actual words that you were using, but it is the right answer for what you were looking for. If you look at the second example to the right, uh, who painted the Mona Lisa, for instance, uh, you get Leonardo da Vinci. And again, uh, I never used the term Leonardo da Vinci in my, in my query, uh, uh, yet this is the result they're giving me. Uh, and they also showing me at the bottom, this is a bit more advanced, 
uh, what other people were searching for. And when you try to really understand how they do it, it all goes back to what we spoke before about uh, search history, global search history, the knowledge graph, understanding that uh, the Mona Lisa is tied to the entity Leonardo da Vinci. And Leonardo da Vinci is tied to an entity of other artists like Van Gogh, for instance, and, uh, and also Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, which share the same name. So it's very, very interesting to see how Google uh, in, interpret the, uh, uh, the search intent of, the, of a user and how smart they have become in, in really giving you the right answers uh, just uh, by understanding the, the, the intent behind uh, uh, the search query. Uh, moving on, uh, I want to really uh, discuss a little bit what it means for SEO and what type of uh, uh, applications you, you can uh, uh, assign to semantic SEO and really benefit from it when, when you're doing SEO. So first of all, we are all uh, familiar with voice search, uh, whether you're using Siri or uh, Alexa or uh, just uh, the Google Assistant. Uh, uh, you go and you press a button or you just talk to your phone and, and you ask a question. Uh, and you get a response, you get, the, uh, you get an answer from uh, the search engine that uh, really matches what you were looking for. Uh, and it is, uh, and, and, and uh, the way to benefit from it, uh, uh, let's say you have a website and you want, uh, you want to be uh, present, uh, wh whether, uh, whether you want to be uh, included in the voice search results or, or, they, or you just want to appear on, on the page at uh, Google Displays when you're looking something using voice, uh, the two main keys to do it. One is is to make sure that your your content answer a specific question or a list of them, uh, because typically when people use voice search, they ask a question like, uh, "What is the nearest uh, sushi restaurant uh, uh, near me?" or uh, "How's the weather going to be tomorrow?" or maybe some uh, uh, informative questions about anything else. Uh, Google tends to prefer pages that provide uh, a specific, highly relevant and profound answer to, to that specific question. So uh, the, uh, this is one thing you can do, uh, just generate content that really uh, answers specific questions in your area, in your area of expertise, uh, so you get a chance to actually rank for it. Uh, whether using voice search or just people typing questions in Google. And the second point is to use uh, structured uh, schema data, which uh, really helps the search engines to understand your content better. Uh, I'll give you an example. You know, when, when uh, let's say you have an, uh, an e-commerce shop, uh, you can use uh, uh, schema data. It's called schema.org, if you heard the name, to, uh, to provide a better description for each product that you're selling online, including user reviews and price. And uh, there's a whole bunch of parameters that you can fill uh, on the page using schema. And that would allow Google to understand better your content. And even, uh, uh, for example, in the example I just gave, provide a five-star review uh, uh, on, on, uh, or, or the yellow star review on, on the product exposing what other people are thinking about the product that you're selling. Uh, so just, this is just uh, a second point. So um, to summarize, answer specific questions and use structured data, that would allow Google to, uh, uh, to prefer your content when using voice search. Uh, the second uh, big point is to think topics over keywords. Uh, Again, if, if, if we're going back to, uh, to the examples I showed you before, uh, uh, you'd notice that the result doesn't include uh, anything, uh, anything that I typed in, uh, but the topic is much more uh, fundamental. So uh, when you're thinking topics uh, over keywords, uh, you're getting closer to human interaction in a way. And the way to tackle it is to create comprehensive content, not just content that 
evolves around a specific keyword or a set of keywords, but actually talks about a specific broad topic and breaks it down to, uh, uh, to additional uh, subtopics. And we will uh, use it. Uh, we will show you later on how it's done. It's called uh, content clusters, basically. So uh, a content cluster is, uh, is a collection of articles or pages or content uh, highly related to one another and complementing one another uh, that uh, that when when look at as a whole uh, it gives a very good uh, uh, very good information about the topic that you were targeting with this content so we're not just talking about sporadic blog posts anymore but everything if you really want to rank for for uh, for a topic with your business, uh, you need to create comprehensive content and use content clusters that would present something a lot more holistic and complete to Google about this topic. And that would show them that you know what you're talking about, that you really have valuable content to share with your uh, users and that you deserve to rank uh, high on the first page. Uh, uh, focus on search intent. Uh, uh, it's not just about doing keyword research or, uh, uh, again, writing a blog post around a specific keyword, but, uh, for example, uh, if, if we break it down, uh, let's talk about, let's say you're selling shoes online. Uh, so you might, uh, just, uh, uh, you might just talk about the shoe itself but you can also evolve it and take it a step further and talk about the search intent behind what the user is looking for. And the user is typically looking to buy a shoe or maybe co compare one shoe to another. And that should reflect in the way you do your keyword research and the way you do your content. So you're not just writing about a shoe, but you're writing about why you should buy it or, or how this shoe compares to another shoe uh, that the user may be looking at. Uh, so the whole idea is really to get into the, your customer's mind in a way, understand what they're looking for, uh, what they're hoping to find, not just in terms of keywords or just rushing to write a, a random blog post, but really understand the thought process behind everything they type in and give them uh, a well-structured, comprehensive content that can serve them and, uh, and therefore rank high on, on the search results. Uh, the last point really about semantic SEO and how you can leverage it for your own good is, is to emphasize, uh, put a lot of emphasis on user experience. Uh, uh, it's all part of the, the same mission uh, that uh, Google uh, are pursuing. Uh, they want to give the best experience to, to their users, not just in terms of content, but also in terms of user experience. Like how fast is the page that you are currently looking at? How fast does it load? Is it mobile friendly? Is it something that you can look at uh, using your phone and you will get uh, a, a good surfing experience? So the, these points are also very important to complete the picture and if you do all these points that you're seeing right here in front of you, you should be semantic SEO ready and really leverage from this uh, revolution that uh, just keeps on evolving uh, uh, with the years. Uh, let's talk a little bit about content clusters and really because that you know uh, really affects the way uh, you may be doing your uh, uh, your content. So. Uh, based on our experience, a lot of our clients are putting a lot of energy into writing content, but they lack structure, they lack strategy, and uh, there is no um, uh, there is there is no plan behind the content other than just hey, let's do an article about selling shoes online, and uh, and uh, let's do an article about whatever topic you may think of. Uh, the idea is really to go to take a step backwards and, and pause for a second and uh, think about the problems that your uh, buyer persona may have uh, because this is what drives them to go online in the first place and look for you and, and the solutions that you offer. 
So make a list of all the big problems that they, they are facing. Uh, group the problems into broad topics. Uh, uh, and then use the keyword uh, research uh, methods to identify and break it down to subtopics. So if we're looking at the example uh, to the right, which, which may reflect key scouts and the way we, uh, uh, the type of content that we may be producing uh, for our clients. So you see that there's the website, there's the blog, and under the blog, there's, there are uh, uh, three uh, content clusters. One is talking about design, one is talking about marketing, and one is talking about SEO. And each of these topics is, is a topic by itself. And you can break it down to a lot of subtopic articles that complement this content cluster. For example, SEO may be broken into keyword research, into on-page optimization, into link building, into semantic SEO. And each of these topics would, would be considered as, as a subtopic that supports uh, the main article in the center. Now, the main article in the center is, is typically referred to a pillar article. This is a, a methodology that was uh, introduced by HubSpot, I believe, several years ago. And, uh, and it's, uh, in, in terms of uh, length, it's, it's a longer article. It's typically, uh, if, if I, I need to put a number, it's around 25, between 2,000 to 3,000 words. Uh, or even more, where the sub-articles are typically between 800 to, uh, to 1,000 words each, more typical to the blog, really comprehensive. It talks about, uh, it doesn't go too deep about each and every subtopic, but it covers everything. So it's like, it could be like your uh, beginner guide to SEO, for instance, if we're uh, talking about this example right here. And it can, it can be constructed out of paragraphs that talks about keyword research and talk about on-page optimization and site audit and everything else that you need to take into account when you're doing SEO. And each of these paragraphs is linked to a supporting article uh, uh, which talks specifically about that uh, subtopic in, in, in uh, high details, like keyword research, we would create a, a subtopic uh, post of around 1,000 words, and, and we will actually explain the whole process and what tools are we using and, and really try to provide as much value to the reader as possible uh, and, and, and then link it to the, uh, to the pillar article. So the sub-articles are linked to the main one, and there's also interlinking between the content clusters themselves because uh, if they're close enough in uh, in a topic, there must be some uh, overlapping between uh, uh, between the content clusters. So uh, that creates a very powerful structure. And when Google comes to your website and scans your uh, your blog, they're not just seeing an article about keyword research. They see a whole network of articles it talks about SEO, uh, providing very high value for the users. And that gives you the, the chance to actually win a uh, uh, very good placement with Google, uh, even if you're not going to win the keyword SEO in this example, you would still generate a lot of traffic and, and leads from long tail, uh, uh, long tail queries that are uh, highly relevant to uh, the content that you produce. Uh, and, uh, and typically, when, when somebody is looking, is using a long-term query to look for something, they have a much higher chance of becoming, a, uh, of converting or becoming a customer or, or buying online because they know what they're looking for. They're not just looking for SEO because somebody is looking just for SEO, could be looking for a job, could be looking for, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, tutorial videos or anything. And they don't necessarily have, the, the search intent that we are looking for uh, in our customers our personas. So, uh, uh, so that, that's really, you know, an overview of content clusters and what I wanted to share with you. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the SEO tools that we are using. Uh, and I broke it down to uh, keyword research, content ideas, 
off and on page optimization and measuring progress. So uh, on the keyword research realm, there are many fantastic tools that you can use. Again, the idea is, is if, 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 I, if you recall the, the last slide, start by listing the problems that your buyer personas have and then break it down to um, uh, larger topics and only then go and, and drill down and find relevant keywords under each of the topics that you have listed. So uh, SEM Rush is a fantastic all-in-one SEO tool, and you will see that they appear in any other uh, segment on this table. But uh, I specifically like them for keyword research because uh, they offer a lot of filtering capabilities. So you can actually uh, type a topic and then uh, eliminate uh, many keywords that are irrelevant for uh, what you're looking to write about and what you're looking to, uh, or the search intent that you believe your user should have when coming to your website. Uber Suggest is, uh, is a tool that uh, traditionally, uh, historically, that they actually showed all the autocomplete variations of any, uh, any keywords that you typed in. Uh, this tool was acquired by Neil Patel uh, several years ago and, and uh, Neil did a fantastic job, in my opinion, to turn it into uh, uh, a great keyword research tool. Uh, I believe it, it was free up to recently. Now we introduced a different uh, pricing model. You can still use it for free, unlike SEM Rush, which is a paid tool, uh, but it's a limited uh, usage. Uh, so uh, I think like uh, it put a limit to some degree. Uh, where if you want to use it uh, and get more value, you need to become a paid user. Answer the Public is, uh, is a great visual uh, keyword research tool that focuses on answers to, to questions that people uh, type online. So you can just uh, uh, search for your topic and, and see a list of all the questions that people are using uh, online to, uh, that are related to the topic that you placed. And again, if you recall the whole, uh, uh, what I told, told you about the voice search and, and providing content that answers specific questions, this is a great tool uh, that would help you with the research and, and finding the questions to begin with. Uh, a great tool that I think is overlooked is uh, simply go to Google. These are the last two results here. And look at uh, what Google uh, are choosing to display for every query that you type online. So again, if, if I want to rank for SEO, uh, the first thing I would do before I even go to any of uh, the other uh, tools is to go to Google and type SEO and see what comes up and see what people are asking about SEO and see the related search at the bottom of the search results to understand how Google perceive uh, uh, as connected queries to, to SEO as, as the main topic. Uh, so uh, this is my top five selection for keyword research. Moving on to content ideas, uh, there's a fantastic tool that is called uh, BuzzSumo. I don't know if you heard about it, but uh, uh, it's a paid tool and uh, uh, they keep investing and developing this tool uh, introducing new features all the time. But the core feature that really makes this tool shine is uh, that they uh, actually, uh, for, for uh, any query that you type in, uh, they have uh, a huge database of content that they are constantly refreshing and they're showing you the content based on its popularity uh, on, on the social network. So if, I'm, uh, if there's a highly popular article about a certain topic, uh, they would measure the amount of Facebook likes and retweets and any other uh, social engagement metric that they could assign to that article. And based on these metrics, that they would rank uh, the articles from uh, top to bottom. And that gives you a very good uh, idea about which, uh, uh, what type of content really uh, shines online, what people are relating to and uh, what they like to read and, and, and it gives you a chance to really analyze a certain piece of content and understand why it's, it has become so popular. And then you take what you've learned and you apply it to your own content. So you can uh, uh, 
uh, I don't want to use the word copy, but you can do take a similar approach to a very successful article uh, which relates to the topic that you are targeting and, and do the same or maybe leverage the, the positive points that you have uh, identified in your own content. Uh, again, Google search results, it's very obvious. Just uh, go to Google and see what comes up for any, uh, b before you start collecting content ideas, that should give you plenty of ideas what, what you should target. Uh, Quora is a fantastic uh, Q&A database uh, of, uh, of great quality and great social engagement. And uh, it's a great place to go and uh, simply type your topic in and see what people are actually asking. Uh, uh, Again, uh, SEM Rush is uh, also, they have a content idea tool based on their huge uh, keyword database and what people are asking online. And finally, Google Trends, which I, again, think is a bit overlooked uh, in the industry. Uh, it really gives you uh, a very useful information on a large scale broken down by countries and, uh, and uh, uh, seasonal uh, uh, seasonal effect of uh, 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 queries. For example, in the winter, people would look more for coats than in the summer, uh, and that I think is really important to complete uh, your understanding of uh, uh, which ideas you should target with your content. Moving on to uh, on and off page optimization. When I say on page, I mean things you can do within your website and off page is things you are doing uh, externally, like uh, achieving links from uh, other websites primarily. Uh, there's a great tool that was recently introduced in the uh, SEO space. I think it's like uh, a year ago, something like that. It's called uh, Surfer SEO. And uh, uh, what I like about this tool is that they actually take a very analytical approach to uh, 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 to, uh, to comparing your own page with uh, the top 10 pages that comes on Google. So let's say you want to, you, you, you wrote a piece of content and you pass the keyword research, the content ideas, everything is ready and the content is up and running and, and now you want to really uh, optimize it for SEO. So you would go into this tool and you would provide the, the you would type the search query that you want to rank for, uh, and then you would provide the page that you, you have written, and this tool will show you, uh, judging by the top 10 results on Google, how well you stack against the competition in terms of pretty much any on-page parameter you can think of, from meta tags to the length of your content, to using headers, to uh, uh, to keyword density and everything else you need to know. They really break it down to a very nice report and they show you that uh, you need to add, uh, let's say, uh, 500 words to your article in order for you to be in the same benchmark with the top 10 results for that specific query. Uh, so they actually, uh, they analyze your page and, and your search query and they give you very specific optimization instructions that would allow you to take your uh, content uh, to the next level and really increase the chances that it will rank uh, with Google. Same goes, by the way, with uh, link building. They show you uh, all the websites that are currently linking to your competition, the top 10 results, based on the page that you provided and the query that you provided. And it shows you, uh, it tells you that, uh, you know, if you want to obtain links, here is the list of websites that you should go after if you want to match uh, the top 10 competitors uh, uh, for that topic on uh, Google. So it's a very useful tool. Uh, there's a bit of a learning curve, but I think it's well worth it. Uh, SEMrush again, uh, here as well, uh, gives a very good analytical data uh, uh, both uh, off-page by analyzing uh, uh, your incoming link uh, uh, partners uh, and, and also uh, providing some great uh, SEO audit tools that uh, 
enables you to pretty much uh, analyze any page on your website. And finally, there's the Google Search Console, which is a very useful tool in SEO uh, because uh, unlike Google Analytics, they can actually break it down to, uh, uh, to queries that uh, Google know that you are ranking for and they are driving traffic to your site. Uh, so uh, this is Google's uh, way to actually tell you what do you need to improve uh, on your website and how well your website is performing in their eyes. So to me, it's a must go tool in any SEO work that you're doing. Um, the, last, uh, uh, the last topic uh, is about measuring uh, progress, which is a very important point. So you can do all these things that we've talked about up until now, keyword research and coming up with content clusters and writing content and doing the SEO optimization and building links and everything. If you want to measure, if you, you wouldn't know how to measure uh, uh, your actions, you wouldn't know whether you did good and what you need to improve and how effective your work has been up to that point. So uh, you have to invest in, in measuring your progress all the time. And uh, the go-to tool, the most obvious is Google Analytics. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. Uh, we are also using HubSpot, obviously, with uh, HubSpot clients that provide some very good uh, uh, insightful reports. Uh, Google Search Console, obviously, again, it shows, uh, it shows uh, what type of uh, queries your website actually ranks for, which is something that you cannot get from any other tool, uh, with the exception of SEMrush. Uh, and then SEMrush, obviously, again, uh, showing uh, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of, they're giving a very uh, holistic overview of the whole, uh, of your progress when it comes to keywords uh, uh, as a whole. So that's, that's a very good tool to use across the board. Um, I want to talk about how to measure uh, SEO success. Uh, uh, because I think, again, it's, uh, it's uh, something that a lot of people who are dealing with SEO, they, they overlook and, and don't really understand or don't even pay attention to uh, uh, and allocate time to, to do these tasks. So the obvious is really to check the rankings of your target keywords, and you can use any keyword ranking tool out there. Uh, we're using uh, SEMrush at Keyscout. Uh, you can, uh, uh, you should analyze your organic traffic using Google Analytics and HubSpot, and obviously uh, measure the leads and conversion rates again using Google Analytics and HubSpot. But the not so obvious things you can do is uh, measure the amount of uh, impressions and clicks on uh, Google Search Console, and then uh, eliminate or or filter the brand versus not brand keywords. So uh, for example, in many of our projects with our customers, uh, uh, customers really want to know how well uh, they have expanded their visibility on keywords that are not related to their brand. Uh, because to them, this is, uh, and it's true, this is, this is the, uh, the chance to actually attract new uh, uh, potential customers that don't know, they're not familiar with the brand to begin with. So this is something you can do very easily on Google Search Console if, if you know how to use this uh, platform. Uh, uh, the second thing we are looking at is the total amount of keywords that you rank for uh, on, and this is something that uh, SEMrush uh, gives us very easily. And the reason why it's important, it gives you a holistic view of uh, your uh, visibility and it allows you to compare one month to another. So you can, uh, for example, uh, take the past uh, three months and compare them to the previous three months and, and see that uh, you, have, uh, uh, you have increased the, the total amount of keywords that the website is ranked for, including all the long tails and everything else. And that, that really is a great indication that overall you're making good progress or maybe you're declining and, and you're failing to increase your visibility online. Uh, uh, using Google Analytics, uh, other than the obvious, you know, measuring organic traffic, uh, 
the, the most uh, important thing that we are using this platform for is really to uh, look at the content behavior and, uh, and see how well uh, every page that we have optimized uh, has has been performing over time uh, compared to the previous of uh, uh, before we actually optimized the page. So uh, if you are introducing a new blog post or if you if you optimize an existing uh, an existing page on a website, you would want to track the before and after uh, on Google Analytics to actually see how it impacts the uh, organic traffic, how this page specifically. Uh, plays a role in your overall SEO uh, uh, progress. Uh, we are also looking at user behavior metrics such as time on page, bounce rate, and, and some other parameters. Again, it's, it gives us a great indication about the quality of the organic traffic that we are sending to, uh, uh, to every website. Uh, so if the time on page is short, uh, it it's a red flag or if the bounce rate is high, it's a red flag because it means that there, is, there, there isn't a good match between uh, what the people are looking for and what they're finding on the website. So either the traffic is wrong, either the content is wrong and we need to improve it. But there's a lot of takeaways that, uh, that you can uh, extract from looking at these uh, parameters. And the final point is really to break uh, down the traffic by country and device. Uh, if you're going international with your promotional efforts, uh, uh, you may be uh, want you, you may want to focus on a specific country, or uh, you may you may want to focus on uh, mobile traffic because you believe that uh, your clients are looking for you uh, using their mobile device way more than they would use their laptops. Uh, I don't know, for example, again, if you're selling pizza, then most likely people would use their mobile devices because uh, they're not near their computers when they want to eat, uh, just as an example. Uh, so uh, that really concludes uh, the measuring aspect of SEO. And uh, Risa, I think I can turn it back to you. So you yes, can for sure. Just... Thank you for that lovely introduction <clears throat> you managed. All right send me to so thanks for that um so now guys i'm going to show you tomo mentioned actually one tool that he uses out of the many tools i never knew how many tools seo people used so on my side you know we usually use hubspot to track certain things and as i mentioned earlier not many people know how to use hubspot really for seo so in this exercise i'm going to show you how hubspot is giving you just a what I call a sneak peek into your SEO activities. So you can really use it to measure it. Again, you do need to use it in, with other tools as Tom explained, it's not an all encompassing SEO tool. For example, it can't give you um, competitors analysis and things like this, but it does show you how, you how your site is performing and how different topics you're ranking for how well you're doing. So first of all, how do you find the SEO tool in HubSpot? You need to get into marketing, lead capture, sorry, planning and strategy, and it's an SEO tool here. So once you click this, you get, it, you get to this page, and basically the first thing you have to do is define which topics you would like to rank for. So for example, in this example, I'm going to show you this client is deciding to rank only for two topics. So we are working on ranking for the term, the topic MLOps and data science. So you simply add a topic, first of all, and once you add a topic, Google will tell you, well, HubSpot using some SEO tool tells you what's the monthly search volume for that topic and what's the difficulty for ranking for that topic. So it's mainly very straightforward how to do it. Once you get into the topic and you've chosen it, this is the topic clusters and the pillar page that Thomas spoke of earlier. So first you have to define what is your pillar page. So your pillar page, it's like, so this is the center of the page. This is what you want to rank for. And this is your main page that you want to drive topic, traffic to. So first of all, you build your pillar page. And in this case, you can see that for this client, their pillar page is a MLOps page. It talks all about MLOps. And you can see all the information here. 
Now, what's interesting about the pillar page now, you have to define what keywords or rather subtopics you're going to connect to that topic. So once you've defined your subtopics, you start building out the branches. Now, as part of your content strategy plan, you might be thinking about these topics already. So you start building the topics as you need, and it goes around and round until you can add as many as you want, but you don't have to populate all. But the minute you decide to start writing blog content or you write a PR, for instance, or any type of content, even when you do guest posts, you should take the opportunity to place a link that comes back to your main pillar topic. Because this, again, helps Google to understand how much of an authority you are, as Tom explained. So the more backlinks you have, whether it's internal links or external links, this page will begin to rank more and more higher within Google search engines. So again, you just add your subtopics. Again, Google will show, show you how many searches are for these types of subtopic keywords you choose. And then you have the option to rank your blog or whatever topic you choose for it. And when you go into the blog post, you would see that there will be a link somewhere in the blog post that is linking back to that pillar topic. So this is how you build that kind of cluster strategy, pillar content cluster strategy within HubSpot. And then once you're doing this, you get to track the performance of the content. So over time, you get to see how many people come to the content page, how much time they spend. And as Thomas rightfully mentioned, you want to track the bounce rate because you want to see if you're bringing relevant traffic. And just to remind you, your bounce rate means that someone came to that page and that page only and they left. They did not go on to a second page. So when you see a bounce rate of 85%, you want to reduce this as much as possible to something like 50%. This is a really decent bounce rate. So you want to make sure that people are going on to different parts of your website at the end of the day. So just to give you a very good view of what a pillar page really should look like as well, of course, the gurus HubSpot themselves do it the best. And we are talking about SEO. So of course, they have a pillar page talking about the ultimate guide to SEO. And you would see in this pillar page, as Tom mentioned earlier, you do have to have at least 2,000 to 3,000 words on this page. It has to be an extremely encompassing page. And one of the features that pillar page has as well it's what's called a sub menu. So you need to actually, because you have so much content and it's a lot of different topics you're talking about, having this sub menu on the page allows people to click on it and get to that section of the page. So you know today, no one is going to sit down and read a 3,000 to 5,000 page blog, but they would like to read and scan different sections. So the sub menu allows them to do that quite easily. And then what HubSpot has done is taken all of their blogs and within all of their different blogs, you would always see a link that comes right back to this pillar page. So this link they have, Ultimate Guide to SEO, brings them back, brings you back right back to this page for them. So you have two blogs already where they mention Ultimate SEO Guide, and the blogs talk about different topics, right? So here the blogs are talking about 19 SEO tips or how to do something with SEO. And each of these posts that they have invested in they made sure to put a link back to their, um, to their pillar topic. So this is how sites like HubSpot do very well on search engines because they have mastered the art of backlinking and internal links, which is super important for your um, SEO content strategy. More importantly though, you do want to also check, you know, as you mentioned, Tom mentioned as well, how is SEO and your organic traffic being affected by your SEO efforts? So just to make sure it's clear, when you do good SEO, it means your organic traffic is going to increase. And you can see for this client, just in this year alone, in the last five months that we've implemented an SEO strategy for them that has a plan and has you know, a strategy behind it, that their organic traffic started to increase. So in the last couple of months from just below 3,000 to just above under 5,000 contacts are coming to their site, and this will only continue to grow the more you invest in it. So it's not a short-term strategy. It's not a quick win. If you want quick wins, you do have to invest in something more like PPC. But as you go more and more in your business and as your business scales, you do have to invest in these long-term efforts 
because as we spoke in the very beginning, the idea now is for you to be found online. More and more people are going to be doing their searches online. If they haven't been doing it before, they're, going to do, they're being forced to do it now more than ever. So there's no better time to invest in your SEO efforts than now, because without it, you will not be able to gain the attention of your audience that you're looking for. So with just a few tweaks and a few efforts and a few investments, you can see these results and see how things are increasing drastically for you as you continue in your business. So this is it really for us. You know, I just want you to remind you that again, if you enjoy our workshops, feel free to always leave us a review on our HubSpot page. I will send you the link. It will be posted on the video. It will be posted in the emails. But we are open now to having any questions that you may like to ask. And I did see that we had a couple. So let me just get to them. So Tom, will get ready because you have some questions that people wanted asked. Okay. 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 So the first question, Tom, was how long will it take to get rankings when you start using SEO? Oh, it's a good question. Uh, I'm trying to activate my video, by the way. Uh, you don't? And it says that the host has stopped it, Risa. Oh, what did I do to you? Sorry, my dear. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, but go ahead. I'll fix it while you answer the question. Okay, so uh, I think it's a good question and it's a hard one to answer because it really relates on uh, your industry, your competition, how aggressive do you want to be? Uh, but to give you a ballpark number, um, uh, what we're seeing with uh, most of our clients and projects uh, is typically, you're starting to see an increase uh, somewhere between three to six months. Uh, but the impact on your business is amazing. I mean, the longer you sustain this effort and you keep on pushing, uh, it just, it, it's a game changer. And uh, that's, that's something that, uh, I don't know, in Israel, for some reason, we're having a hard time uh, explaining this to people because everybody wants everything and they want it now. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that, that's understandable. But uh, uh, SEO, again, is a long-term effort. And uh, uh, if you want to take this route, you, you need to really aim for the long run and it would pay off big time way exceeding your expectations uh, with that said there's a method to actually achieve quick wins where you would see uh, some great seo results within a month and the way to do it is really to analyze what your website is currently ranking for let's say in the top three pages on google and just uh, uh, do some uh, touch points and optimizations on these pages for these keywords that would simply boost them up like 10, 20 spots and, and, and bang, you're on the first page of Google within a month starting to generate traffic. Uh, but where it comes to new terms and a new uh, SEO strategy that you are pursuing, it, it typically takes at least three months to see, uh, start seeing a progress. Amazing. One more question I see here is, why should I continue SEO once I have good rankings? Should I invest in it even further? Uh, I think the answer is yes. Uh, first of all, you need to maintain uh, your success. So uh, if you're gonna stop doing SEO, if you're gonna stop writing content, you're gonna sink back down. Uh, Google always want to see uh, fresh content on your website. This is the reason they gave you the, the stage to begin with. Uh, and uh, so, so that's one aspect uh, to my answer. The second one, uh, there's constant evolving and uh, there's always more ground to cover uh, with SEO. Uh, I can take any topic that you bring to me and really generate a list of 20 topics and, and just keep expanding and expanding and, and finding more ways that your customers are looking for you. Uh, so it's really, it, it, it's, I think it, it goes, goes to, the real question is how big do you want your business to grow? Uh, how ambitious are you about your business? So if, if you have enough clients and you feel that 
you know, you can't handle anymore and you don't want to handle anymore, then maybe the answer is, you know, stop your SEO, just maintain what you have and that's it. Uh, but from my experience, most businesses, they just want to keep growing and growing and generate more uh, revenue and, and do more of the same. Uh, and therefore, SEO is really a fantastic growth strategy uh, for the long run. Amazing. So guys, I just want to wrap up right now by leaving you with some gems. So you will soon get this presentation and you will soon um, have this video as well. But in this presentation, do look out for this slide where we give you some resources that helps you understand further how to build the topic clusters and pillar pages, especially within HubSpot. And we do have an, a really good gem about how to set your content marketing strategy using this workbook that HubSpot provided. So do take the time to actually go through this and check out these resources to really help you understand how to get started or how to even boost your SEO strategy in from today also if you have questions you want to talk to any of us you can feel free to reach out to Toma or myself Toma is the seo expert so please if you have the seo questions you need to reach out to Toma. i cannot promise to help you i am your hubspot expert so i can help you within hubspot but for all your seo questions feel free to reach out to Toma. this is his email access here um, he, I've worked with him previously, so I can attest to his skills and what he can do for you and your business. So feel free to be there. Um, and I just want to wrap up now by leaving you with these key takeaways. So if you did not understand or you didn't get everything that was said throughout this webinar, just remember these six points. First of all, think topic over keywords. As Tomo explained thoroughly throughout this webinar, Google is no longer just looking for keywords. You, as he showed you in the very first examples, you cannot just Google one word and expect to see that exact word come up in the results. Google has become much smarter. To so think about topics that you want to own and become an expert over. Second, focus on search intent. Understand what people are going to use and search for. And this is really done by understanding your buyer personas. So please spend time building those personas and spend time understanding their challenges. Point three, don't forget your user experience. Having a good optimized site that is fast and, and also willing to work on mobile very easily is important. So don't forget how your users are going to access your site. Again, and another point is to define one big topic you really want to, under, you really want to own. Sometimes we get overexcited and we want to do every single thing. It's important that you understand that with all the information there is out there, having your niche, finding your specialty and finding what you want to be an expert in is most important. To so define your one big topic. Point five is to understand the subtopics you want to build around the pillar topic. So really spend time going through your content strategy and going through how you can build different subtopics to support that pillar topic. And last but not least, measure, measure, measure. You cannot define success without measuring things. So make sure you have things in place to show where you started and where you've ended up after investing in all of these efforts. So thank you so much again for everything. Thank you for being here with us. You can follow both Tom and myself on Facebook and LinkedIn. We are very present there. Look out for our company names, Key Scouts and Cacao Media. And again, if you have questions, do feel free to reach out to us on any of these platforms. Tom, I would just like to say a very big thank you for joining us today. I could not have done this webinar without you. So thank you for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Uh, it's been an honor. Thank you for inviting me. And I hope to see you all again. Yes, for sure. So thank you and have a great afternoon. All right, guys. Stay safe. Bye-bye.